Welcome back everyone, this is the State of the Nation. Now, a paper published way back in 2017 by the Political Economic Research Institute in the United States showed how the IMF's programs undermine the ability of governments in developing countries to govern themselves properly. It means that behind the scenes, by keeping you and me in the dark, the IMF imposes hundreds and thousands of structural adjustment plans on countries like Sri Lanka before they ever give us a cent. Even uh, Minister of the State Minister of Finance, Shahan Semasinghe, just a short while ago, admitted to that. For this bailout package to be executed, there are a lot of adjustments that we have to do within our system. Uh, the fiscal policy, the monetary policy and all the other aspects of accountability and how do we ensure uh, that you know this kind of a, uh, repeat story will not take place back in the country. So you know it's a very complex process. Now these plans are geared to guarantee the lenders of this country that their money is safe and more importantly in case of a bust economy just like what's happening right now the lenders will get paid. In better terms, you and I, who live in, in this country, will go to hell while the debtors will have a good time. However, despite this, the IMF has successfully promoted their way of working, uh, mainly through arm twisting and cor cornering nations like Sri Lanka to accept their demands, mainly out of desperation. Well, joining me now is Senior Economist Dr. Kenneth De Silva to talk about this subject. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your time. Appreciate it. Now, the government uh, of Sri Lanka is currently pursuing the IMF deal as the Alpha and Omega solution to overcome this uh, economic crisis. However, uh, among several issues that even you and I have discussed uh, with the proposal of the IMF, uh, one key issue is that the Political Economic Research Institute had highlighted, which I just uh, brought, brought out to you, was that the IMF policies actually enhances corruption in developing countries, especially with the so-called structural adjustments. What are your thoughts on that, Prof. Uh, doctor? Good evening, Mahesh. Good to be back on the program. Thanks for the invite. Uh, well, I mean, the research paper is quite evident. Uh, I mean, there are multiple papers that have been written. In fact, the Hoover Institute, uh, uh, in an essay uh, titled The Case Against the IMF, written back in 1999, is a classic example of what's gone wrong with the IMF. There is a very good example where the IMF had distributed loans to 89 countries as part of their structural adjustment program. And out of that 89 countries, 54%, 48 countries had failed in terms of making any progress uh, in, in, in recipient of that particular structural adjustment program. And there is significant critique against the IMF, uh, particularly uh, in with regard to its managing the overall economies of less developed countries. Uh, so, uh, in, in terms of uh, the question, I think uh, uh, we find uh, as part of the overall structural adjustment program, uh, key components of that are questionable, particularly when it comes to the privatization of uh, uh, utilities, state assets. Uh, in fact, Sri Lanka is a classic example. Back in 1994, I think, when President Chandrika Kumarutunga was there, uh, I think many of the state-owned enterprises were privatized. And there is a lot of uh, uh, doubt and uh, uh, a lot of uh, shroud uh, uh, behind uh, some of these privatizations. And that's the nature of uh, the IMF uh, program, I guess, in terms of uh, getting on with uh, what they have to do in terms of addressing the balance of payments. Uh, so we have to uh, be cognizant of how we deal with it going forward. Well, doctor, uh, do you believe the structural adjustments uh, that the IMF is propose proposing are actually the interest of a foreign nation, thereby effectively undermining democracy in Sri Lanka? Or is there an actual requirement in Sri Lanka to heighten taxes and impose substantial tariff for the country to recover? Right. Uh, in terms of the overall structural adjustment program, which is also a broader uh, a part of the overall Washington consensus, uh, we find there are typically four key remedies uh, dished out to uh, developing countries. And this has not changed since 1965. In fact, it's, it's resurfaced back again 
in the uh, current staff level agreement and the Article 4 agreement that the government of Sri Lanka has signed. Uh, so four particular areas is one is uh, privatization as we spoke about earlier. Uh, so cutting down government expenditure as part of that whole program, uh, looking at the revenue side. Uh, secondly is basically having free markets and financial deepening, which means that the currency has to be let loose uh, and also a more uh, market market based uh, economic model. Uh, thirdly, you find uh, the fiscal adjustment, which is taxes, which is part of your question, uh, has have to be increased in terms of to balance the overall budget. And fourthly, you have to have uh, a framework of governance in place, which also entails that the government has to move away from uh, subsidy and have a market based pricing mechanism. Uh, so all these four uh, points, uh, nothing new to, to uh, say the least, uh, are, are painful adjustments. And uh, in fact, uh, you'll find people like uh, Joseph Stiglitz and uh, uh, Nobel laureate Jeffrey Sachs have been very critical about uh, this particular structural adjustment program and, uh, and how it has created more poverty and more pain and great austerity in countries. All right, we have to leave it at that. Uh, thank you. That was senior economist Dr. Kenneth De Silva. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. This is State of the Nation back in a moment.